Hi, I'm Jackson, and this is not Sweet Tea Guitars. No, but <laughs> Todd's a brother builder of mine, awesome guy. Go check out his channel. He makes amazing guitars. Uh, he currently, I think, has a subscription giveaway going on. Uh, if you're if you're watching this right now, uh, we are currently May 21st, and I think it's supposed to be any day now. So, yeah, go check out his page. The guitar that he's making is killer. Um, he's also an incredibly awesome human being, so definitely worth going and checking out his stuff. Okay. What is that? That is my oh, fret slotting rule that goes with my fret slotting jig. So when I'm ready to cut fret slots out of that, I've got that. <sighs> okay, so I have carbon fiber stiffening rods. And I have a truss rod, dual action truss rod from Crimson. Okay, first step, I gotta figure out width and depth that I'll have to route. So, on width. I'm just gonna do it in millimeters, it'll make my life easier. Six mil. Okay. With that depth. That was width. And six mil. Okay, good. Now depth. That depth was how deep? Deep. Nine. So six wide, nine deep. And six wide three deep. Basically, like I said before, if I have to put a piece here, and a piece here, to be the guide, if I take that skinny bit, because that's big enough, And it's in here like this. I mean, it's gonna have to be deep enough that. But if that's running on there, it's not cutting that wood. All right, we're gonna give it a whirl. First, let's see how deep I can set this. So I am going to run an experiment here and see if it works or if it sucks. Um, I'm thinking that I don't need a bearing bit if I have a piece on either side of the center line that sits up high enough. I can plunge the router bit down in there far enough that the shank is going to ride in the channel that I set with two pieces of wood. So it won't need to be a bearing bit because the shaft will be riding on the guide. Theoretically then it shouldn't need to... have a bearing on it. But I'm going to practice on a piece of... 
two by four here before I try to do it with the neck just in case it uh, goes completely sideways I don't kill my guitar neck that I've spent this much time working on <clears throat> so masking tape and super glue trick on my two guide strips work is figure out a way that I could put the guide on the side of that thing but I don't know how the hell I put the guide on the side of that thing at this point after this might be a Ben question safety's sake. Smart. Best chance of it running away from me that way. Mm -hmm. All right, well, here we go. It's eating up the side pieces and it's running crooked. Okay, okay so second attempt. Uh, half inch, not thick enough. I'll go with three quarter inch risers this time. Second attempt. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Not sure why that happened. I don't think I had to call it tight enough. So I beat that up a little bit, which means I'm going to have to redo that. However, proof of concept. Well, I think with the exception of the fact that the blade came loose that first attempt, that works.
Alrighty, well. There goes nothing, I guess. this thing I'm cranked on that thing is hard as I could with that wrench and it still worked loose. So, uh, tragedy narrowly averted. That router bit came loose once again and uh, threatened to destroy my guitar neck. Um, at this point I have Put entirely too much work into this to destroy it by trying to get overly ambitious with a router. And since I kind of screwed myself from the get-go, not thinking about it until after I made the cut, um, the guide on the side of the neck isn't going to work either. So. <clears throat> Rather than trying to kill my guitar neck or my sanity, what little there is left, um, I have decided I'm going to finish this with a chisel, which might sound kind of insane too, but there's far less chance of me destroying anything by going at it with a nice sharp chisel. So I do wish I had a quarter inch chisel. I have a half inch and an eighth inch, but I don't have a quarter inch for some reason. I thought I did. But anyway, I am uh It's 
going to go about it this way. It's a little more time consuming, but uh, it's also maybe a little more relaxing. A lot less noise, a lot less stress, a lot less chance of things going sideways while you're doing it. So. You have some cross grain in this, which is going to make that a bit more challenging, but I still, I still think that I'm uh, at this point better off going this route. And I set my stone up over there and my strop over there just in case I need to the high grit stone or my strop to sharpen her up just a little bit as I'm going here because this is obviously not going to be a super fast job of plowing this out quick like it was with the router. it's kind of hard to go down a lot of it at a time without splitting the wood or without having it go a direction you didn't want it to or anything like that. Plus it's pretty hard wood. It's kind of hard to plow through it with a chisel. Can I mean if you're... Tap it with a hammer. Yeah, it's, this is delicate work. This isn't making a... I'm not building a log cabin here. The other thing about going down a little bit at a time there, like I was doing, is there's less less likely to run off. Like if I've got a, a guideline there, the cut wants to follow that. If I if I didn't do that first, it'd be really easy to take a chunk that I didn't want. Mm -hmm. to take. Mm -hmm. I know these chisels look kind of rough. Uh, I've had them since the early 90s. So... Did I get you those? Oh no. I got you the ones downstairs? Yeah. You were going to do that to the top anyway, weren't you? What? Use your chisel up there. Yeah.
it like this, it looks like you have more control. Yeah. It did kind of dive right there, but only, I don't know, maybe two millimeters, three millimeters that it plowed out right there in that one spot. It's a little deeper than it should have been. Hopefully that won't rear its ugly head when I'm shaping the neck. I mean, I could, but it ain't gonna matter if I end up digging through in the back side. Not a dwarf, but I'm digging a hole. <clears throat> oh, close. Horseshoes and hand grenades, folks. You gotta be getting close, don't you? I am pretty close. So close.
They've never done it this way? Oh, yeah. He did one a while back that was a hand tool only build that uh, he did end up using a cordless drill on accident, but otherwise. <laughs> Momentary, momentary lapse. He's just going along, doing his thing, and he used a cordless drill to drill a hole, and then realized, crap! It's supposed to be hand tool only, and I just used a hand. I just used a power tool, so. Well, I had high hopes for what I was going to all get accomplished today, but uh, I'm starting to think that it seems like several of us builders, I'm not the only one. Um, it's like the eyes are too big for the stomach thing. Yeah. Um, the. The belief in how smoothly things are going to go for the day is about the same. You had pretty good luck yesterday. Yeah, and I wasn't building a guitar. Figure that. I'm building a guitar and I'm having struggle luck. Oh well. Yeah, I uh... Mrs. Unit and I did all kinds of crap yesterday. I got my table saw up on a platform and wheels so we can move it around more freely than horrible dragging noises every time we try to move it. And got the old bandsaw out of the way, got the new bandsaw in place, got all the setup done on it. Uh, I'm starting to think that the uh, the cost of something is directly proportionate to the amount of time you spend reading a manual on it. You get like a $25 tool or something like that and nobody reads the manual. <clears throat> you get something this expensive and oh yeah I must have spent an hour better reading the manual. So yeah, it's uh, not exciting reading, but I definitely want to make sure I'm doing it right, you know. We bolted it to the floor today. Yeah, so it's, it's going to have to be figured into the cost of the house if we ever sell, because... No. <laughs> No, we uh, got to bolt it in to the floor because it had yeah, just a tiny bit of a shimmy. Not bad, but floor our floor is not 100% square, I don't think, and so it, it had just a tiny bit of a shimmy. So we got that bolted to the floor now, so no more shimmy. That's good. Now I just gotta drill for the truss rod back into there. That starts right here. So I'm gonna be a little bit ahead of that.
things since I ain't going to be. Yeah, I'm chisel it. Gouge. I'm going to gouge it. this and keep feeling like it's trying to push it down up here which is making it torsion upwards and I am almost out of material there Scratch that, I'm out of material there. So why do you have to have that small thing there? Because it, 
because that's where the nut sits. I don't want a gap under the nut. But at this point, now I fucked it up. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of My Madness. Uh, click like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.